What's good, KFF family? Habari Ghani, that means what's the news? And right now, the news is this masterclass given by the dynamic and phenomenal Charles Malik Whitfield as we reflect on Kaumba, the principal meaning creativity. Charles Malik Whitfield, while having many accolades, his most notable performance is as Otis in the Emmy Award winning miniseries, The Temptations. Can we give a warm KFF welcome to Mr. Charles Whitfield? Was that better? That was awesome. Yay! Come on, you have that. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see you. Thanks for joining us today. I'm so happy to be here, and I and I'm and thank you all for your patience. Uh, you know, with me trying to get on, I'm happy that I am on, and uh, and we're rocking and rolling. So, yeah, I'm so, so excited to sh listen to your wisdom. I'm so excited for you to share. <laughs> Wisdom, madness, angry, <laughs> a little bit of it all. <laughs> so tell me when uh, when should I start? Um, as soon as Carlos put, makes you big on the screen, I think mm -hmm. that we're ready to go. Oh, okay. we well, hello, 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 and a hello to all. Um, not only as we celebrate creativity, but we also celebrate life. Um, we all know that we've all seen a 2020 that has stolen so much from us spiritually, mentally, physically, um, in our families. And there's so many people that are hurting and yearning uh, for the comfort, support from so many. And so we're so interconnected and we affect each other in such a massive way. First of all, I want to say thank you. I love you. I'm happy that you've all tuned in. Um, and we're going to get into what is it and what does it take to be an actor? What does that mean? You know, I think that as a young man and a young lady, age is not the denominating common factor. That doesn't really determine what and who can become an actor. The choice is really an individual choice. And that choice really comes from the minute you choose to become an actor, boom, you are now an actor. See, actors and acting, it can be a very, very tricky thing. And uh, it can serve as a platform where you kind of want to say, hey, I'm a performer and I have performed and I have achieved being in certain productions and so forth and people have seen me and seen my work and expressed likes or dislikes and then there's something that comes along with that and that's a false sense of validation and so to become an actor the most important thing is that you chose it and you become an actor and not because someone else is going to validate you but because the moment you chose it that is the moment you became an actor um, now, there's other processes of going through education and making sure you're equipped as an actor. Um, so training is very, very important. The theater and the stage is such a beautiful place to be. Why? Why? Why the stage? Why the theater? Because it becomes a platform where you can be your best and be your worst. And so it works the craft and it works the body and it works the instrument in the art of telling a story, performing, making sure that you're passing on certain information that allows people to be captivated and also be a part of your ride that you want to project. And in many ways, you also get to be, as you continue to have fun in this artistry, maybe even a moment of being a puppet master tugging on the heartstrings of people to allow them and open up this, this gateway into your eyes, into your heart, the successes, the tragedies, the woes, the deflections, the que sera, sera, until we meet again. All of those things that we get to kind of stir up. Um, it's a beautiful process. And I think that it's one when you become an artist that people have the perception that you've done a movie, life must be good, life must be great. 
Mm -mm. Doesn't go like that. Sometimes you are fortunate as an actor, as an actress, to be presented with a role and, and perform. And sometimes you say, this is the role that I've always dreamed of. And that role may not pay you a dollar, which ain't gonna pay your rent, which ain't gonna pay your cell phone bill. And you are gonna have limited texting, no unlimited, you're gonna have the limited plan. So people need to understand that artistry can also put you on a place of the limited plan because you have to work within boundaries because you can't just have it all. But they can be healthy boundaries that allow you to have gratitude and appreciation because as you continue to grow, your limitations will become limitless. And so I'm not speaking in the financial term, but I am speaking in the mental um, aspect and your creativity of the instrument that we want to harness, expand, challenge. You know, we see these beautiful women and men that that go out so proudly, so regally. And 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 in order to do so, sometimes they got to get in the gym and they got to put that work in. And so what does that mean? Well, the muscle can't grow unless the muscle is met with a lot of resistance. And you got to lift the heavier weights in order to push the muscles through to break barriers to strengthen them. And so being an artist is in many ways going through that cocoon of being a caterpillar and turning into a beautiful butterfly. And some people are in the cocoon longer, some people are in shorter. But one thing that I do know for sure is that any artist, any actor, any actress can be brilliant. Brilliant in anything they choose to do, want to do, and it can be accomplished. Now, where do we go from here? How? Well, how? I need that. Put me in a movie. Hook me up. I mean, you know, I could sing, you know, everybody loves me when I'm at, you know, in the house with all my friends and the family. They say I'm funny and I'm cute and you know I'm cute. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man, you know, my, my boys, they say, you know what? I got something. I got that charisma. I got that, you know, it's that it, that thing that, you know, I mean, sometimes I just glow like that on them. You know what I mean? I'll be shining. You know what I'm saying? Let me do what I do, man. I want to be a star. Well, all that's great, but all that ain't going to really happen and work. We have to have a realistic perspective, not that you aren't great, but we don't want you to have delusions of grandeur, but we do want you to have strong enough self-confidence that the self-confidence is only there, not because you believe in yourself wholeheartedly and want to run past people and push and knock people over and only see you or become narcissistic. No, you do need that deep self-belief because when things get difficult, when you hear no, well, you're not exactly what we're looking for. Um, maybe next time. What that means is just because you reach the no, it's still fortifying and growing and strengthening that muscle that says you are still an actor. You may just not be in that particular performance. So you may not be in that particular project. And so we have to reassess constantly as artists, as and as people in our lives, we're constantly reflecting to say, where am I at? Where am I at? What is it I am trying to accomplish? Am I halfway there? Have I made progress? Am I listening to myself? How am I setting myself up for success? And so all of the no's many a times are, 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 are pathway finders so we can build and start to create yeses. And just because you get quite a few yeses, that can also be a false illusion too. And you just believe, oh, you just hot like that. But for everything that's hot, you have to understand the balancing factors in this life. Well, what do you do when you get cold? What do you do when things get cool? How do you reinvent yourself? What does that mean, reinvent myself? 
Well, I pretty much believe that reinventing ourselves is a process of approach. Humility gives us that process of approach that says, thank you. As an artist, I think some of the greatest artistry comes from people that say, I have enough humility that I can listen, be taught, willing to teach, also willing to defer to someone else. And what that brings is a flexibility that, that allows other people's great artistry to also lift your artistry up. Now, when I was a young artist, people believed to, in order to become a productive actor and successful individual in this industry, especially as an African-American man, weren't a lot of projects. What do you do? Well, I'll tell you what you do because people believe that, especially then and many believe now that when you choose this business in the entertainment business, that you have to sacrifice everything in order to make it. I don't agree with that. I believe that not. I believe that you have to be grounded with the foundation of love that supports you so you don't get caught up and fall victim to believing your role that you were blessed enough or fortunate enough to perform in, but segue someone's information that you were allowed to bring to life. But also when it's time to go home, go back home. And when you see your mama and when you see your grandmama, hey, grandmama, how you doing? Do you need me to take the garbage out? Yes, sweetheart, could you? Because you can never get too big in the idealistic thought of, well, I'm a star now. I made it. Well, what does that mean? You, you're just not going to make coffee for yourself now? Do you think somebody's going to do that and be waiting for you at your beck and call with the bell? No. So to keep it real, to be in a realistic perspective, it's great when you have all of these phenomenal people, crews helping films. Uh, people in theater hands off on the stage, helping make sure you have your props and you you hit your cues and and all of these other different things. But what we can never, never, ever get lost um, in the process is the collaboration. None of us do it alone. So the how is in who is supporting us? Your mama, your sister, your brother, very dear friend. You know what? You were really great in that role. But I still think you could have did better. Ooh, like that? You just gonna come at me like that? I thought I killed that. I mean, I, mur I murdered that. You know what I'm saying? I was heat. Yeah, it was. And um, I think in the heat column, I'm gonna give you a five, five. I mean, if this was a rap, man, I got all the mics. No, 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 you don't. And you have to be able to take constructive criticism. Don't take it personal. Constructive criticism. See, because we can be so hard-headed, we won't let the light and the truth in and go, hmm, I can be a little better. See, because as we move forward in this life and as we get a little older and we get a little grayer, do we get wiser? I hope so. And what is wisdom? not really sure yet because it's ever changing, right? Sometimes we're holding on to our instincts. Sometimes we're holding on to our spiritual belief. And, and these are the real core foundation of becoming an artist that's willing to stay around. Not the artist that came and left. Like he went into the mall and was like, I came to go get these new pair of sneakers and I'm out. No. I came in the mall to shop and I'm going to be here for quite some time and I'm going to other stores. So I might be here all day with a lot of bags. So just choose how long and what kind of platform do you want to create your career? Here, here, here. What does it take to stay here? What does it take? A lot of determination, a lot of discipline. It also takes a lot of forgiveness for yourself because sometimes we fall short. I've fallen short. I've fallen short in many occasions. 
I've gone in auditions and gone off on my lines. And for every other great performance, I walked in the door and was like, I don't know who that person was, but he was awful. And I think some people would have agreed. Um, but just as we are awful and we have those moments where we can want to get into our, our, our selves and put our heads down, we have to lift ourselves back up and go, keep it moving, keep it pushing, keep doing what you're doing. There's so many fascinating, talented people out there that I get blown away by talent when I get to see them. And honestly, it's an honor that I get to work with such fantastic, phenomenal people because it's no longer that I'm like, oh, that actor's dope. Oh my God. And the way they deliver that lines. Woo! I got goosebumps. No, I'm like, what a hell of an individual and a person. How lucky am I? to go to work, call it work, but be surrounded by people with integrity, people with character, people with kindness, people with love. See, because when we have that, then we're really succeeding. And there's so many great people out here that have not been highlighted because they're not in major movies, but they're in the theater scene. And ooh, to do what they do on a consistent basis, it's just mind blowing. It's, uh, I tip my hat, I bow my head to them um, because the inspiration is in the doing. And so we ha might have a lot of new artists out there and go, well, well, okay, well, let's call this a masterclass. Well, let me tell you the most important thing about a masterclass. There are no levels to this. Information is everything. How we use information is important. How we are willing to access ourselves, be willing to grow and also know that at some particular point, you may have to go into a different pathway. And so if you're willing to be in front of the camera, also be willing to be behind the camera. If you're willing to be the person changing lines, be willing to be a writer as well. It is okay to look in the mirror and say, and I think it's okay today to invest in myself. <clears throat> it is okay today to invest in myself. Mm. That's very powerful, even when I say it, because I had a hard time, long time, growing up in the Bronx, you know, before people were social distancing, I was social distancing as a young man. What you looking at, dog? What you looking at? I'm looking at you, looking at me. So what's up? So what's up? Oh, we got a fight popping. Eh, you know, so you grow up on these alerts, alerts. You know what I mean? You watch your back. Watch your, You watch your back. You know what I'm saying? Watch my back. We have all of these different isms that allow us to survive our survival skills, right? But then we have to get to a place where we say, okay, well, wh wh what are we going to do? And how are we going to get there? And how can we get the innocence back from our childhoods that have been stolen from all of us? Because every time I see an artist, I know that they have a special story to tell. And your story that you have to tell that is personally your story, and it is very special. Yes, indeed. Don't be confused about it. And in that process of understanding how important our stories are, I want you to say it is okay to invest in me. Because if an actor takes accountability for his work, for his, his, his showing up, his integrity as a professional, then if you're willing to invest in other people's projects and bring them to life as actors and actresses. Ooh, I'm so excited to see what it's going to look like when you're willing to invest in you. Care about it. Understand that. So that's the, the, the simple foundation for keep it moving, jump in, and let's go. Now, how do we sustain that? Without the highs and lows, we don't. The highs and lows come. So this spiritual fortitude 
has to be grounded in a great understanding. I don't care what your religion may be, find one. Find a calling greater than you so you can understand how small you are, but the might of many and sing with one mind, one destination can get anything accomplished. And so I say, protect your heart, protect your soul, right? Because they'd say a lot of people in this industry, oh man, he sold out, he sold out for the money. Do, any, do anything for the money. Some people start, you know, I see the young people out there, you know, I, I gotta get that bag, I gotta get that bag. I'm like, what's in the bag? What's in the bag? Underbird? What's in the bag? What's in the bag? 40? What's in the bag? What's in the bag? Oh, that money. I said, oh, you, man, everybody carrying money in the bag? I don't think I want my money in the bag, dog. I don't think so. Because if I got to carry my money in the bag, I damn sure ain't made enough money. Think about that, right? So when we start talking about the mastering of this artistry, to act is one thing, to be funny is another, to have that bright sunshine disposition is great. But then you also need to understand how to tell a story. Sometimes it's not about you and sometimes in life, we also have to get out the way, get out the way of ourselves, step out the way of me. Just tell the story, please. I don't need you to be extra. I don't need you to be dramatic. I don't even need you to be funny. Just tell the story, set of lines. Sometimes the writers do such beautiful work, you can't even hear their work. Um, but it's a process, you know? I say for everything that we learn, when it doesn't go our way, we are actually on a faster track to learning more. Um, we start out with a lot of, you know, actors and actresses, also in the industry. You'll, you will gravitate towards other people that you genuinely like and befriend then also have to compete oh, this is my friend we both have for the same role well guess what wouldn't it be best and is how great is it that if the role didn't go to you at least it went to the friend who you really appreciate and love and care about and like champion him champion your friend push them on support them lift them up when we speak about artistry, no one wants to talk about the ugly part of artistry. We've seen we, we've seen some of this going on, you know, what women have had to deal with, men in casting couches. Oh, sweetheart, be strong. I know you're cute. I know your waist tiny and your figure is just hitting. Be on point. You ain't got to give it up. And if they want it, tell them I'm sorry, sweetheart. I'm saving that something special, something, something for somebody else. This ain't a hit and run so you can so-called put me in your movie or hook me up. You're going to hook you up. You investing in you. You're going to hook you up. Why? Because you investing in you. Every time you take a class, ooh, class is kind of expensive. Put the money down. Ooh. I really wanted to get that Gucci bag. Oh, okay. Put that money down. I'm in the class. I'm investing in myself. You know what? I do need these headshots. But you know what? I, my, my iPhone camera worked just fine. They, this is all they need. Maybe not. But this artist who is working on making sure these photos come out a particular way. Wow, I like what you're doing. How much? Ooh, 400. 400 sounds like a lot. Huh. Might need to see you next month. Can I work a deal out? I can work a deal out. You're investing in you. Do it. See, because nobody talks about there's all these investments you have to make over the way, over the years and over the time. And you have to reinvest. And it's like a dress that fits you just so good. Oh, when I wear that yellow dress, I'm the sunshine. And then all of a sudden, you like somebody and spill something on the dress and it ain't fitting right. It don't fit right no more. I mean, maybe I've been going in the gym, working out too hard. I got a little slimmer. Whew, I might need something a little tighter. I'm going to go find me a new dress. Find yourself a new dress. Keep finding a way to go back into the mirror and say, I'm willing to invest 
and myself. See, because you get up in the morning and you brush your teeth and you, you know, start your day. Sometimes you got one eye open. Um, you know, sometimes we roll in our head because we got to get up and we don't want to get up and we really needed a little extra 10 minutes. Get comfortable with looking at you in the mirror. I think that artists right now have a heads up, not necessarily in technique or classic work. You may, they, they may necessarily not be a part of, at least not yet, not all of them. But what's so great is now technology with our films and our cameras, you get to put a pot up and video yourself and do a scene with a friend or a fellow actor and actress and say, oh, that was good. Why was that good? It just felt good. You know, and sometimes you're trying to create this magic, but you don't know the route and pathway to go get it. And so technique is really just helping you structure and be able to understand what was it and how did you get to here? So now you can do it again. And then you can do it even more so, even more so effortlessly. But a great teacher once told me, Herbert Berghoff, you don't get paid to do scenes and perform by yourself. You get paid to also perform with someone else, right? So having that flexibility is so important. But don't get confused either, because being able to master a great monologue, when you see all of these Oscars and Emmys, there's always somebody that has a speech and it can be pretty impactful. It could be pretty darn great when you hear it and you go, oh, I mean, you know, I, look, it, it, you know, we have such icons in the industry to look up to with mastery of work. When we talk about Denzel Washington, Sam Jackson, Lawrence Fishburne, the late Chadwick Boseman. I mean, we've you got Jamie Foxx. We got all of these artists, all of these artists, and all of these fantastic women. Phenomenal Viola Davis. I mean, the names go on: Angela Bassett, Tasha Smith. I mean, there's just a plethora of beautiful talent. And I'm forgetting the other name. Um, you know the name that I'm. I'm um, the name. That other amazing actor and, and the actress, the name, mm, mm, mm. That's what happens when you get a little older. You start forgetting some stuff. That up, uh, the name, you, your name. Because your name is worthy to be with all of those names. The new actress, the new actor. And so you have to have a sensible determination of what are you willing to do? What are you willing not to do? Because that will create your intentions. When you're in a relationship, you start dating someone. Oh, I like him. We, we, we went out. He's cute. He's nice. We have great conversations. And then you realize, oh, so you just want to hit it? You, that's it? So, so that, that was it? Oh, so you busy now? Mm. But you may not have asked, what are your intentions, okay? So in this masterclass, the what and the how and where we go, you are the actor the minute you choose it, not when somebody finally sees you in a role and says, kudos, thumbs up, okay? Take care of yourselves. Always have your family. Listen to them because... No matter if you don't make it in Hollywood or in Atlanta or in London or anywhere else, you'll always be welcome to come back and chill out on their couch. Your sister be like, you got the couch, it's good. And you'll regroup and you'll go back out there even better, even stronger, even that much more determined. So I love you. We're going to open this up to some questions in a second. And uh, that's what I have to offer today.